Welcome to the channel. Today I'll be talking about armor carrier vests. I have one here with me. It's a releasable type and it's a molly vest so it's fitted with uh, magazine pouches up front as well as utility pouches and inside it's got uh, bristle plates front and rear together with soft armor panels. This design of vest is probably the culmination of around 20 years worth of development uh, based on operational experience. And the story starts in around the mid 90s uh, when NATO forces were deployed uh, to the Balkan region under the banner of S4 and K4. S4 and K4 personnel were uh, required to mount highly visible patrols both on foot and from vehicles. This of course made them a target and so to help reduce the risk uh, an urgent operational requirement um, came about uh, to provide personnel with Bristol armour. These vests were very heavy uh, but they had no additional features, nothing to make them a little bit more user-friendly. This was swiftly followed by the devel development of the Mailer vest which um, was a, another Bristol vest made by a company that specialised in armour and on the front of these vests um, were magazine pockets. So you had three magazine pockets, each one holding two magazines. And so it reduced the need for somebody to have to wear webbing. That's an additional two kilos of just webbing, not including the um, magazines and the actual contents in the pouches, as well as a 13 to 18 kilo hard armor vest. Uh, the Americans were coming up with something uh, even better, which was the interceptor vest. Now the interceptor vest uh, was a vest primarily designed to carry the hard armor plates as well as the soft armor, but they were uh, fitted with uh, molly webbing. This was a uh, basic one inch strapping or 25 mil strapping sewn down at regular intervals to provide a platform. It meant that a rifleman could fit out his vest, his armor vest, with uh, rifle magazine pouches, a saw gunner or support gunner could fit it out with uh, box magazine pouches which are larger, or a medic could fit it out with uh, medical kit pouches and so on and so forth. Um, it meant that armour could be widely rolled out to uh, personnel who were um, deployed in forward areas um, and each person could customise his or her webbing uh, loadout uh, as needed. Now the interceptor vest did have some disadvantages. I mean the first one really was that it was center opening uh, so there was a velcro along the front and it opened much as you'd open a, a jacket or shirt from the center. The plates of course were meant to cover the whole front of the body and also the back. Um, so there was a need to have additional fabric in order to uh, enclose the entire front with the armour, uh, as well as being able to open up the vest from the centre. This additional fabric was, of course, heavy and hot. And so when the theatre shifted to the Middle East, uh, heavy and hot was really a disadvantage. And... Um, Although interceptor vests were widely used because they were standard issue, uh, new and innov innovative designs uh, were coming up that um, considered how to reduce the amount of bulk uh, carried in. So for example, uh, a vest that would be put on by putting it over the head uh, would reduce the need to have so much fabric since the plates would be carried in a single panel on the front and the rear. There was a sting in the tail, of course, and that was the IED, the Improvised Explosive Device. It was uh, a device that could be um, set up in an area which uh, was likely to see patrols either on foot or from vehicles, and it could be re remotely detonated. So that meant the risk of being injured came not only from the front and rear uh, through a small arms fire, but also from below. So if you happen to step over an area and the device detonated. And in that case, you had uh, the problem of having very badly injured people uh, wearing 13 to 20 kilos worth of armor and equipment, probably immobile, 
needing to be evacuated very, very quickly. And so the final uh, innovation was to uh, fit the armor vest with a release cable. Pulling the cable would mean that the vest would come apart, and so instead of having to carry off an injured person together with 13 to 20 kilos worth of equipment, the vest and the equipment could come off and then you were just dealing with the injured person who was being evacuated to a medical facility. Now that we've talked about how we've come to this design, let's talk about some of the features of the design. Adjusting the uh, releasable vest is done on the back. There's a panel which lifts up to reveal the compartment on the rear. And this is where the cable, the release cable, is threaded through a loop which is fixed to the back of the base. And the loop threads through all the individual pieces which comprise the uh, shoulders, the sides, and the idea is if the cable is pulled, and of course there's enough cable length to make sure that it does loop in on itself so it doesn't come apart accidentally, then all the panels come apart facilitating his um, or her uh, removal from the uh, site. Adjustment for length over the shoulders and width from the waist is also using these eyelets and it depends very much on uh, your size as to where you want to uh, set these uh, eyelets and thread them through the retaining cord before putting the cable through the whole lot. Despite the weight, and I estimate the weight here to be about 15 kilos uh, with the Bristol plates and the soft armour, the vest is surprisingly comfortable to wear. And this is achieved by having the back panel, so if we open up the vest, that's the back panel of the vest. And you can see the two straps that come over the front of the body, like a cummerbund. That helps to hold the back plate in place without unnecessary movement, which can rub and be generally annoying. And then the front panel, the front of the, of the uh, vest with the uh, armour, the plates and the soft armour, is held securely along the sides with velcro panels. There's an additional uh, strap that goes from the back of the vest, secures over the front, and then the whole thing is secured a second time with this extra panel here. Now, both straps, so that's the one to hold the back plate along onto the front, and also the second one that helps to hold the front onto the back have uh, elastic fitted so if you are moving and you do need a little bit of extra uh, room in order to move it does actually uh, move with you. To operate the release cord you have the cable, this is the same cable that uh, we showed earlier for the adjustment on the rear and it runs to the front and the release cable is fitted onto this handle, you rip away its retention, and there is the handle, and just pull that down, and then the cable will release and all the panels fall away. Uh, it can be threaded over either shoulder, so there's retention straps or loops over uh, either shoulder here or there, uh, and that's so that if you do happen uh, to shoot from the left, from the right shoulder rather than the left shoulder, uh, and you don't want to have a rifle getting in the way and operating this by mistake, then you can thread it to the other side. Over the shoulders, we have this loop of material which does open up, and it is helpful as padding because, of course, carrying uh, 15 to 18 kilos just on the shoulders with a thin strap is particularly uncomfortable. But it, it, it does open up all the way, and so if you do need to thread through um, radio comms or hydration or anything from the back of the vest 
to the front, it is possible to do that securely. Here I'd like to show how the uh, armour fits in to the vest. So this is the front of the vest, uh, from the inside of course. And so by opening this velcro here, you have access to the entire front. And so you can fit a panel of uh, soft armour into this entire area. Against the front panel of the vest, you have a pocket for hard armour. So this is an example of a Bristol plate. And this is quite a large pocket as well. Um, so for instance, this one is, we estimate to be a 12 by... 14 panel, 12, 12 by 12 at the very least. And so there's space for it to fit with a little bit of extra either side. I think that this pocket could actually take a 12 by 14 plate. And you're not going to tend to get larger than 12 by 14 anyway, because at that stage, the, um, the rigidity of the panels is going to make it difficult to bring the shoulders in and get into a comfortable shooting position. And so the whole thing is kept in place with this wide strap at the right, at the level that you need it to be. So if you need this to be a little bit lower, because that's your body size, then you can drop it down a little bit lower. Or you need it higher because perhaps uh, your center mass is a little bit higher, perhaps you're a little bit shorter, then you can have it a little bit higher. And the same is located on the rear, so you can do uh, plates front and rear as well as soft armor panels. So that's a quick lowdown of the releasable armour carrier vest. I hope this video has helped to demonstrate some of the features uh, that are a little bit hard to explain uh, using just pictures and paragraphs. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.